Welcome back to State of Decay 2 and the Lion's Share. Uh, I was looking around at my map and I realized I do have a slight problem here with hostile enclaves. Now, they haven't spawned any of the new um, Trumbull Valley missions yet. I just barely got back into the session. So while I'm waiting for those, I think I'm going to go try to make the world a little safer for my people by um, absolutely slaughtering these folks who get in my way. So I've loaded Marshawn up here with a uh, pretty powerful 7.62 assault rifle with a break so he can do as much damage as possible to people. He's also got a bunch of different options at his disposal as far as throwing things uh, at, at, at the compounds. Uh, one thing I do not have is uh, oh, what's that throwable that attracts all the zombies? The zombait. I don't have any zombait, but that's okay. I think, you know, it's more interesting if I shoot these people myself. So... Hey there, Stealthy Assassin. Thanks for joining me. Man, can you believe that that used to take twice as long? All right. So, first stop. These jerks. The stranded city folk. No longer going to be stranded. They're going to be on their way to hell. Hey there, Senior Sausage and Tandy Lens. Good to see you both. Somebody's following me. Oh, a whole bunch of somebodies. Hey there, guys. You know what? Not dealing with your nonsense. You can just stay in this field where you belong. I'm going down here to murder some folks. Uh, I'm being cavalier about this. I actually am not a big fan of how often we make characters hostile for no reason and leave you no choice but to either completely avoid them like the plague or murder them. Like, those are kind of the only two options. Feels kind of crappy to me. Uh, so, you know, we've, we've talked about different potential solutions to that. None of them have yet sort of reached the priority level that would cause them to happen. But, uh, yeah, we do have some ideas for how we could approach that, how we could fix it. Because right now, thematically, it's just really weird that we lean so hard into you being sort of a hostile, violent enclave who just deals with people uh, by shooting them in the head. That feels just a little, I don't know. I, I keep wanting to call it like it, that it's off-brand for us, except that if it's in the game we made, it's kind of on-brand for us. It's just that I don't like our brand, and I think it should be something different. We are, like, we are attempting to tell zombie apocalypse stories that are positive and that are about hope and that are, you know, that don't just, you know... So many apocalyptic stories try to actively tell you, like, the moral of the story is that you can't be a good person. That survival requires you to be awful and, you know, murderous and willing to do anything. And I don't like that as a moral message. Like, that just doesn't feel like you're making the world a better place uh, when, you, when you tell people that that's how you think the world is. Because, you know, sure. Oh, hey, look, there's a mission I was waiting for. We'll do that later. Um, sure, if you're in dire straits, sometimes you are required, uh, if you want to survive, to do terrible things. That's true, uh, and sometimes, you know, the only way to avoid doing terrible things is to decide that you're not going to survive. Uh, that can be true many times, but the problem is when you, when you tell sort of like modern people who live in a very different society that this is how you need to be, this is real survival, this is true pragmatism, they start applying that, uh, that set of, you know, morals to other situations, and they start thinking, you know, that, that that the way to be smart, and the way to be clever, and the way to be sort of, uh, you know, uh, to come out on the right side, is to always be the one who's willing to hurt and exploit people in order to get their way. I just, I don't love that as a message. So, we didn't intentionally make that a message of this game. Uh, but I think you can take that implication from the way that these enclaves work. So, I'm being cavalier about it, but... Oh wait, why is my gun not making any noise? That's weird. I've got some kind of weird gun bug. Ah, crap. Okay. I got the one dude. Oh crap, there's another guy. Luckily, I think the zombies are... Ah, stop it. Stop it. Okay. The zombies are a bigger problem than the humans. I was able to set some of them on fire. That was helpful. Oh, crap. Was that just a screamer? No, what was that? I don't even know. Oh, what the? 
Okay, yeah, zombies, get after her, please. I really wish I knew why my gun wasn't making any noise. That's odd. Okay. So that guy's trying to shoot me. Zombies, please get on him, please. There we go. Whoa, wait, was that a bloater? Did I get... Okay, who am I missing? That, that woman is still back there. With the zombies. I don't know. I'm using a lot of my uh, gunshots here. Okay. I've got 29 bullets left. At least one of them is still alive. Probably fighting a bunch of zombies right now. Oh, hello. Did that actually take the screamer out? It did not. Okay, so where... Oh, there she is. Hey! There we go. It just occurred to me... I've got no heals on this character. <laughs> I brought all of the explosives, but nothing to heal. That If, if anything expresses the fact that uh, I'm too focused on the um, violent side of this game. There we go. I just I just flashbang those guys so I can get out of here without dealing with them. Oh, well, I thought I was going to be able to do it without dealing with them. Oh, come on. Okay, okay, so. Whew, we got that done. Let's head down to one of our outposts, get ourselves some actual heals, and then, uh... See if we can take out that other hostile enclave. And then I'll see if I can catch up with the chat, too, because I've been totally ignoring the crap of, out of all of you. Again, I don't know how Brian Menard does it. That dude was able to play this game at lethal and also read the chat. I, I don't understand. <laughs> Playing at Nightmare occupies my attention so thoroughly, I cannot keep up with you people. All right, so... Get in here. Get ourselves some heals. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. I meant to just use one of those. I don't actually want to... I don't want to carry our worst stuff with me, but I can use them when there's no time pressure. I think I might have... Okay, I've got a little bit of 762 left. I should probably craft some more. So let's do that real fast. go into this next battle with the same amount of stuff that we had before. Let me try taking this break off. Yeah, this gun is just not making a noise. That's so odd. It's kind of disconcerting, actually. Like, like I want to use a different gun. So this is the HP PDW. Let me see if the next gun I use has the same problem. Let's grab another 7.62 gun. And see if just all of my gunshots are off. Or if this is... Wait, where am I? Shotguns. Is that below shotguns? I think it is. Um, D. Bartini doesn't fire fast enough. Ooh, the BAR. That's my favorite. Okay, so we're going to bring a BAR with us. Let's install. Okay, let's try to fire it once. Okay, it has a sound. I don't know what the deal is with that HB. But... Let's install the brake and try again. Yep, still makes noise. So I don't know what the deal was, but I'm glad I got a different gun now. Okay, so since I think I'm fairly safe in here, even though I just fired a gun a couple of times, I don't think the zombies are going to find me. So let me try to catch up with the chat. Oh, so uh, Dedrick001 says, Woot, finally figured out how to watch your live stream. Yeah, sorry, if you watch me on YouTube and you want to catch me live, I don't ever actually stream live on YouTube. I'm, I'm a Twitch affiliate, which means that I can only stream live on Twitch. Uh, so that means that you have to go find my Twitch channel, which has got the same name as my YouTube channel, uh, and you can watch me live there. I used to have a regular schedule. Lately, things have been so hectic around here that I'm kind of streaming opportunistically. So uh, the message about what my schedule is that I have currently on Twitch as my sort of like default screen, um, uh, it's a lie. I don't stream mornings on weekends. I just stream whenever I get the chance. Often lunch break, 
breaks uh, are, are, you know, a, a good time. Sometimes like a Friday morning, I'll get some time or a Thursday afternoon. Uh, but that's usually when I, I can be found. It's, it's tough though. If you follow me on Twitch though, you will get notifications. You can also follow me on Twitter. Um, I tweet every time I'm gonna, I'm gonna stream. So those are ways to, to keep up with it. But yeah, I'm glad to have you here. I'm glad you were able to figure out how it works. All right. So <laughs> Stealthy Assassin is was what I was talking about how, you know, thematically, uh, I wish our game wasn't quite as like horrific. Uh, he's saying State of Decay 2 pacifist run. Uh, so when you say pacifist, do you mean like you're not willing to kill humans or you're not even willing to kill zombies? Because I'm I, I don't know if that's possible. It might not be possible to get through State of Decay 2 without killing zombies. Um, oh, so Senior Sausage has an interesting question. He has uh, uh, what educational things did you do in order to be a game designer? So I am probably not a good example uh, to follow. And actually, let me let me start making some progress towards the other direction while I answer this. This is a little bit of a longer uh, question. So uh, my example is going to be a bad example for a modern person because I've been doing this for 20 years. And um, 20 years ago, there were not a lot, if, if any, um, uh, like game development college programs or anything like that. Basically, it was kind of the Wild West, and um, you know, game developers, like the owners of, of uh, game studios, would often just be, they would have their eyes out for clever seeming people to uh, to invite to, to to sort of join their companies. And uh, you know, if you, you know, if you just sort of lucked out and you met the right people at the right time, you could end up with a job in game design. And I was sort of the probably the last generation of people for whom that was the rule. Um, I just sort of, I ended up meeting the right people under the right circumstances. Uh, I was actually a film student. So actually, to answer your question directly, I was a film student. I went to film school um, at uh, Chapman University, and I dropped out of film school when I got an opportunity to work at a game studio. Um, and so, like, I did get a grounding in sort of creative, collaborative work, uh, and, and sort of the philosophy of, you know, of, of the kind of, the kind of uh, person you have to be, the kind of commitment you have to make in order to uh, do this kind of work. Uh, so I did learn that uh, at film school, and I learned a lot about, you know, like, composition, you know, like the, the, the visual side of it. I learned a lot from there. I didn't really learn how to be a game designer, though, uh, from um, from film school. So so I picked up most of my knowledge about game design just on the job. I, again, got into the right situation, impressed the right people in the right, you know, scenario, and then I got hired to, to be an entry-level game designer. Um, and I, and I did that work for a while and basically I had no idea what I was doing, but each step along the way, uh, like each year I happened to, um, to not flame out as badly as somebody else. And so I always just sort of managed to fly under the radar just long enough to learn how to do the job. And then once I knew how to do the job, you know, then I had like a resume and experience and I could, you know, keep working at it today. Uh, the process of getting in is probably really different. People aren't just looking to hire randos off the street, uh, you know, just because you happen to meet and impress the right person under the right circumstances. That's not really the way into the industry anymore. Um, there are college programs, places like DigiPen, Full Sail. Oh, crap, these guys are attacking me. Um, uh, I, you know, there's, a, there's a program at uh, Southern Methodist University uh, called Guildhall. Uh, there's a bunch of programs like that where you can actually get a, a grounding and education in game development. And the best ones, what they do is not just sort of teach you the basics, but they also like give you experience working on a team, building things for your portfolio. And that ends up being a lot more important to, um, uh, to impressing uh, prospective employers is having something that you have built. You can talk through why you built it the way you built it, um, you know, what you did. And, and that can get you an entry-level position. And then, again, just like it was with me, it's up to, like, after you get your foot in the door, it's all about showing people how, you know, how how hard you're willing to work. Uh, and I don't mean that, like, crunching. I just mean, like, you know, are you an adult that can be given responsibilities? Like, can somebody hand something to you and say, hey, make sure this is good, and then you successfully make sure that it's good? Um, and you put in whatever effort it takes to, to do that. And, uh, you know, are you, you know, do you come up with clever solutions to problems? Do you listen to feedback? Do you get better over time? Answering a lot of those questions is what's good, is what's going to put you in a position to, uh, to succeed at a, at a role like that. So anyway, I should probably murder these people. Um, let me just throw a nice little war crime inside. Hello, would you like some war crimes? Yeah. 
Okay. Ah! Come on. Hey guys, why don't you shoot the other? Why don't you attack the other human instead of just everyone attacking me? You jerk zombies playing favorites. What? What were these guys feeding you? Were they nice to you? Oh, come on. Reload your gun, idiot. Okay, okay, we got it, we got it, we're good. Whew, all right, let's just get the heck out of here. As always, thank you, Matea, for making it easier to find my car. So, Senior Sausage asks, um, can I have a job at Undead Labs? Uh, no. <laughs> Right now, we're having a hard enough time. I mean, this is a really difficult time to hire. You know, a lot of people, you know, with sort of all the disruption that's been going on lately, like, a lot of people are just rethinking their lives, questioning what they want to do, uh, you know, and that means that there's a lot of turnover uh, at work. And so we're trying really hard uh, right now to fill some very senior uh, experienced positions uh, at Undead Labs. And so, no, no, sorry, I'm not, <laughs> we're not hiring people without any experience at the moment. Um... Okay, so we actually managed to murder those people, which is good. Um, the new arrivals here are being jerks, though, so I might want to just preemptively see if I can make that go badly for them. Uh, I've got a yeah, I've got a closer outpost I can go to. So let's go, let's go to an outpost. Actually, I should have marked it. Let's go to this outpost and restock again. Ah. Oh no! I liked that door. Oh, whatever. I can magically make one appear if I get a repair kit. Let's also get over to an outpost so that I can again look back at the chat. That was a really good question. Thank you for sort of giving me something fun to talk about. But, uh... Yeah, I'm going to... But I also just skipped every other comment that every other person was making because I was interested in what you were saying. So, let me get in here. Again heal up my character with the cheapest meds and grab something else. Let's grab some more of... Ah! I've lost my cursor! Okay, there we go. More of that. Uh, I think I probably still have enough bullets and I've got a shotgun to back off to if I need to, so I think I'm probably good. All right, let me just, like, can I climb up on here? Yeah, I'll climb up on here, and let's read a little bit more. Uh, oh, hey, Lady Arian says, you have glasses again. Looks much better. Thank you. I like myself better in glasses, too. Uh, I have very, very faint eyebrows, and so my face is just not quite as human uh, unless I've got uh, corrective lenses. So these are progressive lenses, by the way. They're my first bifocals, which is weird every time i sort of look up at something it sort of changes its magnification a little bit and it it's it's odd but most of the time i don't notice um let's see here oh yoda uh had suggested actually uh with with that one uh group that was hiding out in a garage i could have slipped a grenade under the garage door i hadn't thought about that that's a good idea i should try that in the future um Oh, so Yoda BZH says, may I do a small feature request to be able to see the number of days spent with the current community? As far as I know, there's a small space in the resource recap where that could be shown, uh, especially for the 100 days achievement. That is, we've got that written down as uh, as, as an idea card. We, that's something that we want to do, um, let people to let people track how long they've been there. Because yeah, if you're going for the 100 days achievement, you don't want to have to like back out to the save the save slot screen to be able to see that information or, or you have to be like watching like a hawk for the day to roll over to tell you that. So yeah, I, I absolutely agree that the game should have that. So it's on our list. Uh, that's all I can say at this point, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it is a good suggestion and the game should have it. Uh, dark smoky asks, can PVP be possible in later games, uh, or, or as an option? PVP is a whole different set of problems to solve than PVE. Um, you, you have to be really, really, um, like, uh, on the ball when it comes to uh, just sort of like like handling things like lag, things, you know, like, like making sure that, that you know, that everybody agrees that the thing that appeared to happen really did happen. Uh, you can fudge that stuff a little bit with, PD, with PVE, but with PVP, you have to be absolutely perfect with it. Um, and so there's technical reasons why it would be an additional challenge to try to do it. But also thematically, it's like we don't, I mean, I've been, you know, as I've been saying, uh, you know, throughout this particular stream, like, it really kind of 
doesn't make us that happy, like how much human on human conflict there is in State of Decay 2, particularly just like uh, unmotivated, just kind of jerky human on human combat. It's like, like it's okay to have human on human combat, but it's like, it feel like it's got to mean something. It can't just be sort of like a throwaway, like, oh yeah, and then I killed them. Nah. You know, and so I fear a little bit that it would kind of get that way if we had PvP. Um, and there's lots of other zombie games that do have PvP. I mean, you know, there's, there's DayZ, there's um, that, that one game that's coming up that's called what's it called the one that's like the division only it's zombies anyway that one's gonna have pvp like there's a lot of people who are doing pvp and i feel like that's probably not like like we, we if that's the kind of game you're looking for like there's lots of games that'll supply that I, I feel like state of decay does better when we're sort of leaning more into the cooperative uh vibe that you get from you know uh from playing with friends and against the zombies let's see here do, 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 do. Oh, well, so Cogs is actually showing approval of something I did, which is very rare, uh, saying that I'm actually doing an okay job of reading the chat, uh, at least when I remember to read it at all, that, I, that I'm that uh, i doing an okay job. So I appreciate that, Cogs. Thank you. Um, so <laughs> Mozatrack was a little confused why I wanted a gun that made noise. It's not that I wanted a gun that makes noise in the simulation to attract the zombies. I wanted a gun that I could tell I was firing it because it was making noise. Um... Let's see. Okay. Do, 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 do. Oh, so Senior Sausage is going to a community college right now as an automotive tech. That I mean, that's a really smart way to go. I mean, there's a lot of those um, sort of like craftsman's type jobs. Like, uh, there's high demand for them. And you can, uh, from what I've heard anyway, I mean, I haven't been, you know, uh, searching for jobs in that arena. But what I've heard is that those kinds of arenas are actually really good places to go. That people, that people are actually, uh, th 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 folks with those kinds of skills are in really high demand. Airy Twitch, I love your uh, approval of my glasses. Yeah, so so they're the same style as before, but they're kind of like a dark silvery color instead of being sort of the uh, the, the 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 maroonish brown color that they were before. The maroonish brown went well with my hair, but I kind of like the you know I don't know cyborgy vibe of having uh, something reflective on my face. Boop 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 boop. boop. Uh, so Yoda asks, are feature requests and ideas for the new infestation survey still taken? I have an idea I'd love to share if it's not too late. Uh, yeah, so if you, uh, so if you've already taken the survey and you don't, and you don't have access to that, you can still, uh, send tickets to support.stateofdecay.com. Uh, Joe still reads all of those. And, uh, and so, yeah, so y you can definitely get your idea in that way, even if you've missed the opportunity with the survey. Uh, Lady Arian asks, who's in charge of Undead Labs now that Jeff Strain has moved on? Uh, so it's a guy named Philip Holt who's got a long uh, uh, sort of uh, track record uh, working you know, as an executive in a variety of different studios. I'd probably, you know, I would screw up his resume if I tried to do it from memory, so I'm not going to try because I'll just get something wrong. But, um, oh, I'm going to miss this, mi <laughs> this mission, by the way. So let's see. Let's see if they get mad because I missed this mission. In the meantime, smush. Uh, but, but yeah, so I'm not going to try to do his resume, but yeah, no, he's, but he's, he's been, he's been great. Like he's, uh, you know, particularly, what I said, like, like when he is sort of helping set priorities for like the direction that these different parts of our franchise are going, uh, I really feel like he's, he's setting some good ones. Like, you know, he's, he's, you know, one of the reasons why we're, we've been supporting State of Decay 2 for this long. He like, when he, you know, got into the company, he really did see the potential of our older game still having a lot of value. Uh, yep. They got mad. Time to murder them. Um, of that, of our game still having a lot of value, uh, still, you know, four years after release. Um, and so a lot, a lot of the stuff that, uh, you've seen us doing lately, uh, you know, uh, Philip Holt is among the people that you, that you owe for that. So, uh, yeah, so he's, he's doing great. So he's not, you know, he doesn't have Jeff Strain's, uh, like sort of big name from being, you know, a founder of like multiple, uh, big successful, uh, studios, but he's, he's been a great, uh, executive producer. And so I am happy to, happy to be on his team. Uh, so Elvis Freshly asks, how many jugs could a juggernaut juggle if a juggernaut could juggle jugs? Uh, he says this is his only relevant contribution. It was a highly relevant contribution, and I really appreciate it. Thank you for for uh, gracing our chat. Okay, so I'm just driving in circles because I'm nervous, but I should just bite the bullet. I hope I don't literally bite a bullet. But first, before I deal with the humans, let's get as many of these zombies out of the way as I can. If I'm if I start this fight already surrounded by zombies, that's going to be a serious problem. 
Because the point where I get surrounded by zombies is the point where I start being afraid I'm going to die. Uh, Dedrick wants to know, has there been any thought into giving an alternate uh, way to uh, gain prestige points outside of Daybreak? Perhaps a couple of good guy quests? Uh, we have thought about that. We've got a few ideas, but we are only a short distance down that path. So uh, I, I hesitate to sort of uh, to give you a, too much of a preview of them. But yeah, we've been like when I originally like designed uh, you know, prestige into Daybreak, the plan was for that currency to be a flexible thing that we could reach in and use for all kinds of different things. And we just haven't done it yet. But yeah, the, oh, whoa, hello. How come they didn't get a freaking diamond? Hey. Oh, crap. Nope, 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 nope. Let's not be dead. Thanks. Okay, so, nope, I'd like to not be hit by things. Thank you. Okay, did I get that guy down? No, he's still up. Now he's down. Okay, but I'm dying, so let's take some more drugs and run away from zombies. Okay, so I think the other human, yes, they are occupied by zombies. Very helpful, but, oh, they're mostly occupied by me. There, there, I get him. I got him. Okay. So now, ah, no, not you. Um, I've only got four bullets left, so let's switch to my shotgun in case I need it. But what I should really do is find my car, which I think is up this way. Oh, look. Thank you, Matea. It's so easy to find my car. I'm just doing that to rub it in your face, Cogs. <laughs> Uh, so, Senior Sausage asks, since Undead Labs is located in Seattle, does one have to live near there to be able to work there? Um, it helps a little because, you know, a lot of times, you know, even though we are largely, you know, we're basically entirely working remotely right now. Um, sometimes we do company events, things like that. Um, and also, you know, originally because, you know, in the olden days, uh, it was necessary for people to live in the same place in order to work with, uh, with each other. Um, uh, Undead Labs was originally just only geared up, like, like legally, to be able to employ people in the state of Washington. But during the pandemic, we started broadening that out. Um, and so we, we kind of, like many uh, game, you know, many parts of the game industry, we are really interested in, um, in, in being flexible about that in the future. And, like, letting people, you know, uh, work here remotely uh, from a lot of different places. And so... Yeah, so we're still, I think we're start, still kind of in that transition. We've got some employees that do just live in other places. Um, some of them live in areas where we've got like satellite studios. Uh, other folks live in areas where just, you know, nobody else besides them lives there. Uh, and they're they're purely remote. Uh, and, you know, and we're hoping that, you know, even as we eventually are able to go back to the office, once we've finished building our new office, um, we're hoping that we can actually stay flexible like that and have, you know, even if some people are working in an office together, other people aren't. Um, and, and that'll be fine. It takes, there's a lot of steps that go to, to go from a company that is primarily in just one particular place to being a company that can support people all over the place. But we're trying to take those steps to make that possible. <laughs> Back when I talked about biting the bullet, uh, Undead Mark says, uh, zero out of five dentists recommend biting bullets. Okay, so we have fired off this uh, Haven Protocol mission, which is good. But we've got a zombie threat at home to deal with first. So I'm wondering... We should probably... Deal with the zombies first. Uh, but uh, how long have I been streaming? I've been streaming for like half an hour. So actually what we should do is wrap up this episode and start the next episode with a siege followed by another siege uh, and get ourselves a Haven device. But for right now, let me just double check, make sure that I didn't um, miss anything super critical in the chat. Please always, if you definitely want to make sure that I notice your question amongst the others, definitely tag me uh, in, in your comments. So Cog says, okay, if you're reading chat, I have a facility mod question. So yeah, uh, fire away and we'll, we'll see if, uh, you know, if the um, uh, communication lag results in you asking the question fast enough. Uh, Ranith Court asks, are the Trumbull Valley story missions supposed to block the community's legacy missions from spawning? Um, I guess they are in kind of the same category because they're all expressed as these like top level story missions. So I forgot exactly how the limits work, but that's a reasonable thing 
to think might be happening. Yeah, that's that's totally a thing that could happen. So I I think that might be the case. Yeah, I think when, when people are in Trumbull Valley, Trumbull Valley is never the first place you go. Like right? Providence Ridge is always the first place you go. So we figure that by the time somebody goes to Trumbull Valley, they've played at least one legacy. They kind of have had that experience. And I haven't had all of them yet, but we figure they've gone to Trumbull Valley primarily for the experience of having the the local flavor, the things you can only do in Trumbull Valley. And so I think I wouldn't be surprised if we end up making the call that, yeah, letting the Trumbull Valley missions override the legacy missions would more often play into into what players are looking for in that level. Um, that would be a good guess, I think, that we make. I don't know. We're, we always, we're constantly making guesses about what players are going to want, and it's always it's easy to get it wrong. As you can see in gestures broadly at everything. Um... Let's see here. Stealthy Assassin says, it's interesting to see how different companies are reacting to the work from home push. It's true. There are some companies that, where it's like their CEOs are like all, like, like they basically decided that, uh, that there's only one right way for people to want to work and everybody else is wrong. And, and people have made, made posted like weird articles about their, their opinions about work from home, which sometimes rub people a little wrong. My attitude is that like, it is perfectly legitimate to like working in a place with other people. Like I actually get a lot of sort of like, um, subconscious comfort from the, just being a primate in a community with other primates and just having folks around that feels good to me. I like it. Um, even if, uh, you know, I, I end up just not talking to anyone and working by myself all day. There's something reassuring about knowing you're, uh, you're part of a community. Um, and so there's, there's, you know, good reasons that I accept why people would want to work in an office, but also there's lots of good reasons why people would want the flexibility ability uh to work from home and so like i don't think that there's one right answer that's like oh you're good people want to work at the office or good people want to work at home and everyone who wants you to go to an office is exploiting you like no like people like different stuff the best thing you can do is try to work out a way that your company can support a variety of different um uh, approaches to work and uh, and try to find a way to mesh them all together which that's a really hard problem to solve but i really have a lot of respect for the companies like undead labs that are that are going to try to make that work. They're going to, you know, try to tackle that, it, it, you know, in the interest of, of making, of giving employees more flexibility. I think that's a really good idea. Yeah. So Renneth Court is voting for us, making sure that legacy missions are always able to spawn. And again, I'm not actually sure it's working the way you're suggesting. I was just thinking that was a reasonable thing. So I don't actually know if it's a problem or not. Uh, you can definitely send in a support ticket though, if you want to make sure that, uh, that it gets on the plate of somebody who actually does know the answer to the question and can evaluate whether or not, uh, you know, that's, that's a problem we're going to solve. Um, so, uh, Airy Twitch asks, does anyone at Undead Labs watch streams to see what uh, people are wanting in the game? Uh, yeah, actually, I don't know if he's still here, but uh, Mark Lautenbach, uh, who was in the chat, at least recently, uh, watches, you know, external streams just all the time. And is, it will frequently funnel his feedback that comes from streamers. Uh, Brant Fitzgerald is also very involved with a lot of streamers. There's a bunch of people at Undead Labs that do. Um, I usually feel like I don't have a lot of time and attention to watch streams avidly. Uh, I'll sometimes have a stream on in the background, but uh, most of the time, I'm not one of those people. I, 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 I'm too busy streaming myself uh i'm too busy talking to listen uh but but i have you all in my chat to help bubble up the same concerns so hopefully i'm still getting something out of it um but yeah we definitely do have people to do that boop, 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 boop. <laughs> So yeah, Elvish uh, freshly just says that you know, they like going to an office because it gives them a break from all their family responsibilities, which is, I mean, that's totally a thing. Uh, I mean, one of the things that's, that's tough about working from home is that um, you don't have that sort of like separation where it's like, oh, I'm in work mode now and I'm only thinking about work. And then you go home and now I'm in home mode and I'm only thinking about home. The two kind of bleed together where you'll interrupt your work to go to a family thing and then uh, not get as much work done as you wanted to. And so then you'll like after dinner, go do some more work. And like the, the two parts of your life start to like, bleed together in a way that means that they kind of overlap in your head. Like I used to actually really value my, my hour long commute in and out of work because it would be a period of time where I could transition my brain over from one context to the other. And now the contexts are on top of each other. And so all of that sort of like mental space that I use to like sort of keep track of what I'm doing at work or keep track of what's going on at home it's being used simultaneously for both. And I feel overloaded in a way that I didn't, uh, you know, in, in, in the earlier world. Oh, yes, yeah, so Elvis Freshly says, yeah, they see Mark and Brandt all the time in Magic Man and FGGB's chat. Yeah, to totally. They're, they're, they're avid viewers of people playing our game. Huh. 
So Cogs is suggesting that uh, that maybe we have a problem where you can't install a white noise machine in a lounge. Uh, it, it, that's, a, that's a facility mod that's meant for bedrooms uh, that it makes uh, morale go higher. You know, the idea of making sure that the lounge can support bedroom mods generally because it is a, a source of beds, that's not a crazy idea. Let me, I want to get my fancy notebook out. I'm going to write that idea down. Lounge accepts mods for bunks cool yeah i can i can, I can write an idea card for that that's a, that's a that's a good suggestion it's the kind of thing that somebody could do in an afternoon too uh probably if they if they wanted to so there you go uh shypa asks any chance of adding uh survivors with glasses to the game uh th let's see here oh yeah sorry i thought for a second i thought you were specifically asking about state of decay 3 but you're not you're asking about 2 um I don't think we're likely to add any new faces for characters anytime really soon. And just adding glasses is something you append to a face uh, would be really tough right now because we have um, faces that were scanned with photogrammetry. They're all fairly different from each other, which means that the same, like, you know, if you've got uh, like a face generation system in a game that keeps all the faces fairly in line with each other, you could do things like glasses accessories that fit every face. But when you've got very different faces in your game, like we have, one glasses accessory would look really weird on one face and, and normal on another. So it would take a lot of uh, sort of work to try to align it and get it right. So I don't think we're likely to make an investment in that anytime soon because it's it's a lot of buck for a small amount of bang. Uh, but in the future of the franchise, I would not be surprised if we ended up still seeing, you know, glasses or whatever. I'm not making any promises, but, you know, I could see us, you know, expanding the range of potential appearances and characters. Anyway, so I've been chatting with you all a lot. Uh, I think that I should probably wrap up this episode because I don't want the YouTubers to get bored. So let's uh, let's put a subscribe button up uh, for people on YouTube later. Uh, I'm going to keep playing right now because I want to get a Haven device and hopefully I'll succeed at that in that video. So you can click on that right there.